So we're in your biology and we're going on to birds in chapter 17 and we're on uh, chapter 17 section 2 and we're going to go through all of the different systems in the anatomy and the physiology of birds. So this is something we don't always think about, isn't it? So let's talk about these birds. So going on to the skeleton and muscle, here's a picture of it. And so bones, okay, talking about the bones of birds, um, they're hollow and they're filled with air and the skeleton's only 5% of the body weight. As in human beings, we were like 14% because basically God has made the bones lighter for the birds, right? <clears throat> and they're very strong. They're very um, light and strong and they have this cross bracing. So it's, they're harder to break, their bones. Their sternum or their breastbone is a very large and it's kind of the, like the keel on a sailboat there. And it um, has is mounted because the powerful muscles come off from um, its breastbone there. It also um, is basically um, their bills are toothless, so they don't have a lot of heavy teeth to worry about. And their um, skull is has very thin and flat bones, and um, ba basically like little lightweight girders in their skull. The humerus is shorter and stronger than humans, and the radius um, in the ulna are very long in comparison because they have to have these long wings, right? And the palm is kind of a rectangular palm, and it's centered and it's hollowed out and, um, for uh, being able to fly. The alola is the thumb bone, and it's, it supports the feathers in the front of the wing. And so it, the, the, this bone is retractable and it has like finger, uh, finger bones on the wing tips too, so the thumb bone. So let's kind of look over this whole thing really quick here, so the skeleton. So here we have, of course, let's go to the head here. You see here, we have the upper mandible and the lower mandible of the beak and the eye socket Birds have very large eyes in comparison to others, in comparison to mammals. And they have the cervical vertebrae and the cranium here. Here's the little cranium here. And that atlas, this is all going down um, as for its vertebrae, um, atlas axis right there. That's the head. And um, let's go to the whole body now. Get the whole body in here. Let's see here. And so now here's the skull and it goes down to the vertebrae. And then you have the clavicle bones here. Um, this is like the clavicle bones is, is like uh, your, your onto the back of your shoulder, like your collarbone there. But this is the, the collarbone of a bird. And then the humerus uh, and then the radius and ulna. The humerus um, being shorter and stronger, right here, shorter than ours. And then the radius being long to hold those wings, the radius and um, um, ulna there being longer. And then you have the phalanges coming out here in the carpal metacarpals, but they come out into the wings. So similar to ours. So, and then onto um, this uh, internal structure, structure of the avian bone, what the bone looks like down here at the bottom. Can you see this? There we go. So here we have the reinforcing struts of it. Their very bones are very light. And here's air, the air coming in the bones. So. Let's go back here to the feet and stuff too. Let's see if you, there we go, okay. So we have um, down, here's the, here's the femur, here's the fibula and the um, tibial tarsus right here. Down here's the, sterm, um, the sternum and the patella, a little different from humans, huh? The metatarsals, three in the front and then the one coming in the back here. So um, you can see how this goes. And of course, so we have the, the tibial tarsus is combined here down into, and these are um, tarsos, metatarsus down here. And the patella is the, the knee right there. So see how you put this together? It's, it's pretty cool, huh? It's how God um, put birds together. And similar to how he puts, um, put mammals together too. So let's, um, let's go on into the mus muscles. So we can talk about the muscles here a little bit. Let me see. 
Mm. Oh, bone of a wing. Let's do that first. Here's the bone of the wing. You see how the small humerus and then the long radius and ulna coming out here, and here's the base of the ulna here, uh, uh, or alula, alula, and onto the phalanges and the carpal metacarpals right there. So here we have, this would be like the thumb here, and these are the phalanges, like the fingers, and this comes out into a wing. Uh, pretty, huh, pretty amazing, huh? So now let's go on to some of the muscles. Of course, the muscles are going to be much stronger to be able to fly and all this. So let's see the muscles here. Okay, see so if you can see this. There we go. So here's the muscles here. We have um, much strength there for flight because that needs a lot of special engineering that God has given us. We have the pectoralis major. So here we have the um, pectoralis muscles. Uh, this is the pectoral muscles of a bird. And the pectoralis major pulls the wing down in the power stroke and the flap there. So you see how the um, pectoralis major comes down this way, I should say here. And, um, and this is the pectoralis minor. The pectoralis minor is the sternum to the top of the wing. It's like a rope and pulley pulling it so that it can flap. See, this is kind of like pulling it down so it can flap. And um, the lower chest is more powerful. The birds do not have good back muscles like we do. So they probably don't have, you know, back aches either. <laughs> so they have no need for their back muscles. So you can see how the wings are raised and you see as they go on, this muscle is very important, two very important muscles of the bird. So, and going on to uh, the nervous system, so let's go on to the nervous system. This is kind of fun, looking at a bird's system to um, ours. So let's go over here. Make sure you look at these because you're not gonna be able to really understand what, a, what the anatomy and physiology of a bird is unless you, unless you look at these pictures. And so let's go to the nervous system. We have um, a brain. So their brain is, is um, wired for flight too. Um, brain telling them just how to fly. And so we have this, the brain here with the cerebellum, cerebrum, and brainstem similar to ours here. So, so you can see here, um, this, this is the uh, cerebellum. Um, this is the cerebrum like ours. And the, cere uh, the cerebrum has two hemispheres similar to ours. And this is where the intelligence and the voluntary um, um, uh, actually, basically, mostly the intelligence and voluntary, not involuntary. Voluntary means what the bird thinks to do is here. Here's the olfactory lobe. That's where the sense of smell is. So here's the cerebrum. And onto um, uh, the, the cerebral uh, cortex is the outer layer of this, the cerebral cortex um, being that thin, that's a thin area. Birds never have convulsions like human beings and mammals and such stuff can have because they have a very thin cerebral cortex on the outside of the cerebrum. And then the cerebellum here looks kind of like comes down in a, a um, kind of a convoluted way here down here. And it has uh, um, the muscle, it does the muscle coordination in the body positions and makes the bird very graceful looking, this cerebellum. And this is the optic lobe right here. They have a big optic lobe. It's part of the midbrain here. So this optic nerve and the optic chasm, very important because the birds have a really, really good um, eyesight. They're very large and compared to mammals. And um, they have their nerves are strong, optic chasm, this whole thing. So this, here's, here's, their here's the top of their brain, their uh, cerebrum, and their eye, their optic, Optical um, lobes are almost as big, very big, part of the midbrain. So cerebellum comes down, cerebellum's balance. And so we go down here to the medulla oblongata, down here, and that being um, for their automatic um, senses, like um, breathing and how they breathe and, you know, um, heartbeat and such like that. And these are their cranial nerves, um, two cranial nerves, and this goes down to their spinal cord. So you can see they have, let's see, uh, we'll stay there.
they have, um, as for their, their senses, they have a very good sense, because olfactory love, they have, well, a, a very poor, I should really say, sense of smell compared to um, their hearing. So their sense of smell and their taste is not, they don't really taste and smell very well. But they can definitely hear very well, and of course they have remarkable eyesight. So let's go on to the next section. I go on to their eyesight here. I'll see if I can bring this down. Okay. Maybe back it up a little. There you go. So um, <clears throat> they're hearing. First, let's talk about the hearing. They have ears like man's, but no external ear. Their eardrum goes into the cochlea, um, into the inner um, inner ear, which is from the eardrum, of course, the eardrum, and then it goes into the inner ear, which is the conchula, and that's very short. Um, it surpasses the human in distinguishing um, intensity and pitches. They can hear things that we can't hear. Huh. So that's pretty unusual. Owls have, um, they can hear a hundred times better than humans can hear of uh, the intensity and the pitches. So. So they're similar at the ears are. Now let's go to the eye, and here's the picture of the eye here. And you'll see here, as for eyesight, birds have very remarkable eyesights, um, more than any other animal. Their eyesight's the best. So if you have the best animal, the best the animal that has the best eyesight, you're gonna say are birds. Their large eyes and their um, uh, spherical, uh, you know, kind of less, spherical than um, humans though. And um, the bird turns its head to see because they can only see on one side because their eyes are not so movable because they see how their eyes are looking on this side and the other side. And so they have to turn their head. Their eyes don't move as well as ours move and focus. So almost immovable. And then they have the upper and lower eyelids. They have a third eyelid. And this is what we're talking about. Here's the eye. Here's the nicotine membrane, um, nicotating, they call it nicotating. Nicotine is like uh, smoking, but nicotating membrane, okay? Nicotating membrane is right there, and this nicotating there is their third, um, their third, mem their third eyelid. And this blinks and mo moistens the cornea. Without this, they would have a hard time, without this extra, Eyelid, they would have a hard time flying because all the things that are flying, it protects it, protects their the dust and everything that's in the air from um, hurting their eyes. And so and it doesn't obstruct their vision when they're flying. So they can have this um, nicotating membrane coming over to protect their eyes and they can still see through it, right? They, they see it have a very sharp vision. They have a, let's see here, well, those are the bills, so let's see. They have, um, we're going on with this a little bit more. I thought there was another picture there, but they have more cones and rods in their retina. You don't see their retina in that picture, but um, this gives them more color. They can see a variety of color than and a sharper vision than we have. Hawks can see eight times um, more um, than we can see, or can see. Um, eight times, they can see up to one mile for a rabbit, which we cannot, you know. The birds in the uh, retina of the eye, they have a phobia. We have a phobia in our retina, but the birds have two phobias. So they can see, some birds can see two objects at once. That is very unusual. They can, they have two places where, where the, they can, the fovea um, transfers to their brain. So they had two, they can see two different objects at once. This makes them be able to see insects and stuff, stuff um, pretty easily and see small objects at a great distance. And again, they have tremendous color vision um, with the UV light. They can, um, the UV light on flowers, they can look at, uh, look for the distance of the flowers and see in the flowers. Let's go back. Uh, get rid of that. There we go. Because the flowers have all these different colors and that's what draw, um, you know, draw the birds in. Um, some birds are nocturnal birds and they have extraordinary night vision. 
compared to humans. So if we take um, hummingbirds, for example, um, they can see all these ultraviolet range of, uh, um, of colors and uh, vision that we cannot, that they're invisible to us, but the hummingbirds can see them. And this attracts them to the flowers and they have nectar guides, these striking little patterns on the flowers so they can know exactly um, where to get the nectar on the flowers and they're visible only in um, their ultraviolet spectrum. So basically saying hummingbirds can see things that we don't see, that we think are invisible, they can see. <laughs> that is pretty amazing, isn't it? So um, let's go on. Let's see if we can get some more of this done here. Let's go on to the digestive system. Um, and we'll focus on this, all these bills, huh? Because that's part of the digestive system, right? So digestion. Birds spend a lot of time eating and they have a very high metabolism. So they need to eat a lot for their fuel. They have a rapid digestion. They digest their food really quick because they have to fly. They can't have a whole bunch of stuff in their stomach to weight them down. They have to digest it quicker. And um, like, in fact, it says um, that a, um, a shrike can digest a mouse in only three hours. And a thrush takes 30 minutes to digest berries. Now, this is three times longer than a human. So they digest very quickly. Going on, um, the, the hummingbird's 100% uh, of its um, body weight. It has to eat 100% of its body weight. So whatever it, it, it eats, it has to eat uh, the, every day as much as it weighs. Can you imagine if we had to eat, if we weighed 120 pounds and we'd have to eat 120 pounds of food? No. Hummingbirds, though, have to eat 100% of their weight. And chickens have to eat 34% of their weight. So they have to, especially when they have a high metabolism. So going on to what they eat, what do they eat? Well, they eat about anything, almost anything, lots of things. Insects, worms, mollusks, some eat fish, frogs, reptiles. They eat some small mammals, crustaceans, and some even eat other birds. And they, their bills, okay, about their bills. Now you have to use their bills to probe into the soil and search into tree bark. And they hunt every twig and they have to drill into small areas to get the insects out, don't they? So they have to have very diverse bills. So let's look at some of the bills here. So um, we have, let's see, we have this, let's go over here, let's start with the toucan here. Look at this toucan. It has a um, fruit slicing bill, a bill that's made to slice fruit because that's what it eats. And then we go on to, let's see, uh, I was gonna go on to a sparrow here. <clears throat> I don't have a sparrow on the list. Well, here we go. Well, let's go over here. The probing bill is the woodcock's probing bill. See how I get probe in there? We have all-purpose bill for the crow. And then we have a straining bill. The flamingo comes down and um, can strain um, food out of its bill. Um, also, a, a scooping can scoop. You know, a pelican can scoop um, fish up as a scooping bill. And going on to, let's see, um, let's go on to, oh, here's the scooping bill. The pel pelican has the scooping bill. I didn't see that on, he on here. Seed eating bill right here can get into seed in the small sparrow like. This is a ghost beak. So it um, eats the speed. Um, uh, let's see, a hawk. Of course, a hawk has a sharp tearing bill. Um, and of course, a woodpecker up here in the corner. Can you see that in the corner? Has a chiseling bill to be able to chisel. Um, hummingbird can suck, has a sucking, so it can um, suck nectar up. And uh, let's see, and of course the straining bill, crow, I think. Oh, here's a, here's a nighthawk, um, gapping bill, you know. Um, so you can see here how they can, all the different purposes. God made different bills for different birds and what they were going to, to fit into what they eat. Can you imagine that? Let's go on, going on to the digestive system, and then we're going to stop and do the rest later. So, no, let's stop right now, and we'll finish up this digestive bill. We went over the bills, 
Um, and each bill fulfills God's plan for the nature of, and we know, and birds have to have very rapid digestion. But we're gonna go through this digestion and then we're going to the excretory and the circulatory in the next video.